I saw a patient in my clinic the other day. I did his hip replacement 20 years ago at the Wessex Nuffield Hospital. He came back to see me because his hip had dislocated a couple of times in the last month. We talked about what had happened. I examined him and looked at the radiographs. The plastic liner in the socket of his hip replacement had worn out to the extent that the joint was now unstable in certain positions. You can see how it's worn in this radiograph. The head of the hip replacement is sitting a little bit higher in the socket compared to this one. Dislocation is one of the commonest complications of hip replacements. It usually happens in the first few weeks after surgery when the soft tissues around the hip are still healing. The risk of dislocation in my practice is about 0.2%, so it's pretty unusual. It's a horrible complication though, because it undermines your confidence and makes you wary of doing anything that might risk having another one. The hip is put back under an anaesthetic, and fortunately for most people, it usually doesn't happen again. Occasionally, you have to have further surgery to correct a technical problem. Late dislocations, like the one my patient had, happen because the bearing wears out. It gets a bit sloppy, and as we get older, our muscles and ligaments become weaker. If you twist the hip, it can lever itself out of the socket. There's usually nothing for it but to have revision or redo surgery. In the old days, this meant having to take out all of the implants and the cement that holds them into place. Since I've been a hip surgeon though, we've used modular components. These allow you to replace worn out parts without having to take everything out and start again. I usually use what's called a dual mobility bearing in this situation. It's much less likely to dislocate again. As long as the main components are well fixed and there isn't too much damage to the bones and soft tissues, it's a much less complicated operation compared with what we had to do when I first started as a consultant. Even so, you've still got to plan the operation very carefully and have lots of extra kit available just in case you need to do more extensive surgery on the day. My patient had used his hip a lot. He'd been a busy farmer and after he retired, he was playing golf three times a week. Most people can expect their hip replacements to last for about 20 years or so before it wears out. If you're at an increased risk of wearing out your hip replacement, I'll discuss this with you when I see you in clinic and we can talk about all of the options available to try and overcome it. Because I'm a perfectionist, I feel terrible about having to do revision surgery on patients whose hips I've replaced. Looking at the radiograph of my patient the other day, I was very relieved to see that I'd done the operation to the best of my abilities and I wouldn't have done anything differently today. A lot of water goes under the bridge in 20 years. We all get a bit battered and bruised and I'm certainly not the same man I was then. But when it comes to my values and the way that I look after my patients, nothing's changed. If you'd like to know more about hip surgery, then please get in touch. Thanks for watching.